in those days it was the war, so you had to join services. Mm. And so by the time I was 17, I was into the, into the army. Mm. Um, but before that, oh yes, Home Guard, of course, we had to join the Home Guard. So I was uh, in the Home Guard, of, I don't know, from 15 to 16 or 17, and then off onto the army. So you had some great experiences as a yeah. young man. And I hadn't intended to become a regular soldier, but having um, gone into the army because one had to, uh, we were then, I was lucky to be posted to um, North India as it was then, Pakistan as it is now. And while I was there, I got involved in taking um, soldiers up into the mountains. And it was there that my mountaineering started in Chitral. Um and because I lived there some time I could speak the local language and knew the local form and a Norwegian party expedition came out to climb a mountain called Tillich Mere in Chitral, um about 25,000 feet and um, they asked me to go with them because I knew I lived there I knew the language I knew people as their liaison officer and interpreter mm. and to climb with them as high as I wished or was able mm. and we got to one of the very high camps uh, and one of the climbers had terrible headaches and was sick uh, and people didn't realize about how to do business then but in fact he was being affected by the altitude mm. and so I slipped into his place and finished up with the team that got to the very summit so my first mountain was 25,000 feet. I was on the short list for Everest um, and we had a sort of selection weekend in, in, in the Alps, the Weisshorn was it? And there were three or four of us who were potential Everest people and um, I'd spent a lot of time in Pakistan living quite high and I climbed to Rishmir so I acclimatised very well and everything got higher and higher. The others grunted and groaned and had ed headaches and things and I sort of felt perfectly all right and a lot of jealousy developed mm. and so two of the people there vetoed me for Everest out of jealousy. No names, no pactoral. But in, in the event, the same literally within days of getting a letter f s s turning me down for Everest. I heard from Charlie Huston, Dr. Huston in America, uh -huh. saying that he was organising an expedition to K2 and they wanted someone with local knowledge and could speak to the local people to go as their liaison officer and to climb with them as high as, as they wished mm. or could. Mm. So I went with them to uh, K2 and the fact we got very high and we had that drama with Arthur Gilkey um, who got blood clots mm. in his legs and couldn't walk and we tried to carry him down and um, had the accident on the way down mm. and he was avalanched mm. and um, the rest of us eventually got down to base camp. Mm. Um, I had a certain amount of frostbite, yes. Well, I was very lucky. Um, I so got got down fairly quickly before it got too bad, and so I've got most of my bits and pieces. <laughs> Did it? Was it um, irritating or exciting? Oh, it was exciting and very worthwhile and rewarding and interesting. Uh, it had a lot to, going for it. And it, during this time, you were in you were in the army, presumably. I was in the army. Yeah. And were you allowed to take time off to go and do endeavour things? I did it during my quota of leave, uh -huh. except for one expedition. I forgot which it was, where I had to take special leave. And um, special leave then didn't count towards your service. Uh -huh. It was knocked off. Um, your service. And years later, 
um, I led the army expedition to Everest and I wrote to the, um, I checked through the Minister of Defence what my, whether my pension would be affected. They said yes it will because you, you would not get paid for that period whatever it was because um, that didn't count as service. So I penned a letter to the Minister of Defence <laughs> saying um, I've just climbed, led the army expedition to Everest and been given an OBE for doing it. But um, when I did the same thing some years ago, I had I was knocked off my service. And so, could I please have, I think three months I think it was, mm -hmm. most <coughs> back again, so it, um, it counts my service. And they wrote back and said, there's no way they had a general, we can give you the service back, but you can serve for an extra three months or four months, whatever it was, to make good the time. And I didn't realise, and they didn't realise then, that that put me into a higher pension bracket. <laughs> so I got a, <laughs> a larger pension. <laughs> well done. <laughs> there were two groups in the Greece step, the mountain group and the support group. And the mountain group walked along the ridge of the mountains, the Pindus Mountains, and the support group led by Dick Alcock in their vehicles. They went parallel along the road and at pre-arranged places drove up towards the mountains and we would join in with them, pick up more supplies and stores, yeah. um, drop off any casualties and, uh, and on to the next thing. And we finished up going from uh, Delphi to the Albanian border. It was fairly tough. Uh -huh. It must be very hard on the youngsters because we, we, the adults find it fairly hard going. Um, the youngsters, anyway, they did very well, but it was fairly tough going, particularly when we got nearer the Albanian border. The, the going was much rougher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, as I say, they gain in confidence, um, self respect, and realised if they really wanted to do something and put their mind to it, they could do it. And they could do things and did do things that they didn't realise that they could do.